Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Today we're going to talk about Danica Patrick's podcast because it is an absolute roller coaster that would make even Cedar Point jealous of the amount of ups, downs, flips, and different movements that you're going to have from it. Now, I've never listened to an entire episode of Danica's podcast because, well, I just don't hate myself enough to do that. But Jeff Olson on Twitter did sit down and listen to a few of her recent podcasts, and they are absolute rides, to say the least. Hollywood couldn't even write this. People are looking at the script right now and being like, oh, we can't touch this at all. I think at some point, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. probably has sat back and looked at some of Danica Patrick's podcasts and been like, dodged a bullet on that one, boys. I mean, even Aaron Rodgers had to get away from Danica, and that man does more retreats for ayahuasca than any other person I've ever seen that's famous, and the amount of people I know that's done ayahuasca is, well... Aaron Rodgers and probably Joe Rogan at this point. So maybe that's not the best comparison that I could come up with. But Jeff Olson on Twitter, apologies if I pronounce his name wrong. He's from Denmark. I will learn how to pronounce his name if that's not how you say it. But he sat down and summarized some of the <laughs> recent Danica Patrick podcast on Twitter and their roller coasters of a ride. One of her most recent ones, she sat down with this person named Elizabeth April, which absolutely sounds like a fake made up name, something that would be like in the terminal list on Amazon Prime. But, you know, for whatever reason, we're going to talk to this lady because she's an expert in the reptilian society. Yes, you heard me correctly. The reptilians invented money to control humans. And the reptilians have become increasingly concerned that the humans are starting to gain power. But don't worry, the Galactic Federation says that Earth belongs to the humans. And apparently the reptilians are fine with that for now. But, you know, Humans are having the most power on this planet since they inhabited Atlantis, which you definitely remember from your history textbooks, probably in ninth grade, if I was going to guess, uh, based on memory of when I learned that as well. She goes on to talk about how the biggest, you know, people in society are are part of this reptilian she says that Adele and Justin Bieber are definitely reptiles and they will shapeshift out of their human form into reptile form at some point as well. I'll probably throw Oprah in there because Men in Black taught me that she is also not from this planet. She just happened to land in Chicago. But she said that at some point, Justin Bieber in the next four years will shapeshift out of his human Justin Bieber form into a lizard on stage at a concert. And then the government will have to come in and quote, Men in Black them and erase their memories. That's how they suppress this information from getting out. I'm not making this up. That's what this lady said. It was it was an adventure to to say the least here. She goes on to talk about how you can manifest something. And by manifesting, she means you can think about it and then it happens. Like, for example, she gave an example, which was she thought about a basketball and then she walked by a basketball court. There was a basketball there. She manifested it. Seems to check out in my book. Right. You want to think about something. You want to see a basketball. You head to a basketball court and you see it. Ah, manifested it right there. I want to see my car. I walk out open my garage door car right there manifested my car to show up exactly where I wanted it to be at. She also goes on to talk about uh, a few other things about like the Galactic Federation. They're in constant communication with Earth, specifically with the government, to make sure that everything is acting cohesively and moving on. The reptilians apparently are very scared of 5G, so much so that Danica Patrick said that she has also installed 5G reducers in her house to limit her exposure to 5G, which is honestly the least surprising thing I think I've ever heard come out of Danica's mouth. Her being a 5G truther is, yeah, that duh checks the box immediately. This Elizabeth April lady also goes on to talk about how aliens are real. And if you want proof of that, well, the video from the 1940s proves it. Just Google it. She also says that she has a friend that's a uh, rocket scientist at NASA and says that everything Elizabeth is saying is absolutely true. So clearly that is a source that you should absolutely believe 100% of right there. And then I think maybe the funniest portion of this was the fact that they ta talked about how there's 12 different dimensions that exist. And the internet is one of those dimensions because time doesn't exist on the internet. Plus, you can talk to people in Sweden, which is interesting. I've talked to people in Sweden. I am now a multi-dimensional being, and I've never been more happy about that in my life. I'm probably going to update my Twitter bio to reflect the fact that I am, in fact, a multi-dimensional multi being. But the fun doesn't stop there because he also, Jeff Olson that is, went through and listened to another one of Danica's podcasts, one that she did with David Wilcox, where she talks about deep state aliens, or at least he does, and she chimes in from time to time as well. And apparently, according to them, all the computers and services will crash and Earth will be stuck where it's currently at, which honestly, that's not the craziest take in the world. Everybody's been talking about cyber attacks for years, so eh, I'm not too inclined to believe that. But then we got a little bit crazier where they talked about how pyramids were built with anti-gravity technology technology and the fact that aliens are able to turn stone into liquid at room temperature, throw it wherever they want it, sculpt it however they want it, and then freeze it immediately back and turn it into a solid form with a laser beam, which again, hey, 
I haven't seen it happen, but I'm not here to dispute what this gentleman is saying. He's um, been on Ancient Aliens before. I've only ever been on YouTube. So maybe there's some not credit behind that, but we're going to move on to the next one. The uh, pyramids that are in Peru. Yeah, those were definitely built by aliens uh, because they're just so high up and the rocks are big. Again, I'm struggling to see the scientific reasoning behind this other than the fact that things are big, rocks are heavy. Yeah, we've established that. Where's the actual proof of this? But nevertheless, we trudge on and try to figure out what else is happening uh, here. It apparently really bothers Danica that there's not more proof of ancient technology or the fact that, you know, these things have been done before. She just wants more proof and she wants more people to understand that that's how these things got done, which is kind of confusing considering you're just saying I need more proof, but also people open your eyes up and this is how things are done. Clearly, this wasn't just done by humans, which again, I don't know. I probably didn't read it in the textbook. I probably skipped over that portion of it. They go on to talk about how the aliens are a more sophisticated race, how they have the technology, how they have the ability to build all of these things. And if you want proof of that, just walk around any European city. Walk around Egypt for one second. You'll immediately understand why the aliens were here. And Danica does not understand why more people aren't apparently open to accepting the fact that the pyramids were built by the aliens. Probably because most of us have sat back and been like, well, there's a reasonable explanation for how the pyramids got built without using alien technology, which seems hypothetical at this point. But again, if you want to believe in that, that's totally fine. You're up to, it's up to your own um, opinion if you want to do that. Also, we go on to talk about, David Wilcox rather, goes on to talk about how he is a master in body language reading. Why we have this discussion, I'm not really sure. He did say that if a woman crosses her arms or her crosses her legs, that she no longer wants an advancement by a man, which I think that might just be for David Wilcox in general. They see him approaching and they immediately are like, yep, nope, we do not want this man getting anywhere near us because, well, he kind of looks like uh, how he does. So that could just be part of that. Uh, when you're sleeping, you are not in your body. Concerning to me, because I do sleep every night, where am I going? That's my biggest question right now. Stars are apparently intelligent beings. Again, I thought that they were just burning in the sky. Apparently, they also have thoughts. Highly concerning, if you ask me. Uh, Buddhists can turn into superheroes with 13 minutes of meditating. I think 13 is the technical number that you have to have. It's like hitting 88 mile per hour to go back in time. 13 minutes, you turn into a superhero. You can levigate. You can move things. The American military has seen this happen before, according to David Wilcox. Apparently also something about rainbows coming. I, it got off the rails pretty quickly. Um... There are American bases across 63 different locations in our galaxy. There's facilities on Mars and on the moon. Obviously, that's why we've never gone back to the moon. Clearly, that explains everything right there. Also, the body scanners at airports that you walk through for TSA to make sure that you're not going to pull a 911. Well, those are there to allow the TSA to know when an alien passes through and when it doesn't pass through. Now, I've stepped through the TSA scanners before, turned back to look at my body being scanned, you know, because sometimes it picks up on something. And I've never once seen the alien, non-alien identity flash up right there. So I think next time I fly, I'm going to have to really pay attention to this one. Uh, <laughs> we have treaties with the Galactic Federation so that the aliens don't pose a danger to us. However, the aliens from Orion want to move in on Earth and set up their own trailer park. What does that mean? Zero clue. Uh, are they trash aliens? Are they the white trash of aliens? Because if they are, I'm pretty confident we can probably beat them. But if they're the sophisticated aliens, then I get slightly more concerned here. Like, is this going to be an Independence Day type of situation? Because those aliens were definitely beatable. And I feel like that might be the Orion aliens. But the Orion aliens are reptilian-like, but also look like humans. So maybe that's where Justin Bieber came from. Explains why he dresses the way he, he does. Also, if people had thrown out... Uh, Bill Clinton out of office for getting a blowjob from Monica Lewinsky, then the world would have ended in an extinction event in 1998. Not ideal for me. I really enjoyed my childhood. I didn't really care about Monica Lewinsky or Bill Clinton, but if the earth would have ended because of that, I probably would have been pretty upset. Thankfully, it didn't happen. He also goes on to say, David Wilcox, that is, that the 9-11, those events actually saved the planet. Because like when JFK Jr. got assassinated, I could tell it wasn't just a random crash. And then I think things just probably went off the rails a little bit right there at the end. And I think that maybe we just don't pay attention to Danica Patrick's podcast because it is a wild ride of just absolute, in my opinion, lunacy from some of the people that she has on. So 
Let me know in the comments what you think. Maybe they've raised some good points for people. I don't know. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Braycard, Instagram and Twitter at Braycard Vlog.